when a GIS team arrived at the Greenland Livestock Research Station here in St. Andrew, the sun had only just begun to peep out. Home to goats, rabbits, and the indigenous Barbados black belly sheep, the research station provides critical research which is crucial to the development of livestock in Barbados. This is a 24-hour a day job. 24-hour, seven days a week. <laughs> and we are right here at 5.30 a.m. So the goats are milked every morning at what time? The goats are normally milked every morning at 5 o'clock because normally you should give them an 8 to 10 hour if you're going to do double milking. And the Israelis do better with their cows. They mill eight at 8 hour shift, three times a day, 365 days a year. Wow. So basically eight hours and three shift is what you should be aiming at. Okay. We will soon be trying to be contacted um, a company in Iowa and we're looking to introduce some new bloodlines because we haven't brought in goats now for the last um, 20 years or over. So we have to get some new bloodlines to strengthen the ones that we have here. Otherwise we get to inbreeding and then you get low production, low growth rate and deformities. Okay. Well, as animals here, they're all very, very clean. <laughs> Do y'all clean them? How oh, does that work? No, um, <laughs> most of the time, when you have milking goats, you have to keep them clean. Because if you don't keep them clean, you have a problem when you go into the milking area. You have to do a lot of washing. And when you have to do a lot of washing, it's not good. Because sometimes you do not dry the water off properly. And the suction from the pulsation suction from the teacups pulls some of that dirty water into the milk. And then you have a high bacteria count and then the milk is not good for human consumption. Okay, I also realized too that the goats are very well trained. Do y'all train them or how do they fall into the lane so quickly? Yes, um, we train them to come into the milking parlor and fortunately for us animals are easier to train than human beings. As long as you get that animal starting to move and you train it into a system, it does not break away. So it's very easy to train them. One thing I didn't know before coming here is that y'all actually do the crossbreeding program with the goats as well. Um, I didn't know that. Can you explain a little bit to them? Yes, the, 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 the goats are the three main breeds that you have, milk breeds that you have. The white ones, the Sienans, the brown ones, the Toggenberg, and the black ones are the Alpine. And we find that Alpine and the Sienans, because they are temporary animals, they do not adjust well to these harsh tropical conditions. I find that the Toggenberg is hardier, is more adjustable and adaptable to these conditions. So what I was trying to do is to take the does from the Alpine and the Sena and cross them with the Toggenberg butt, which have put some kind of hardiness and resilience into them. Because the Senas catch a lot of um, skin cancer because of their, their weight. The, the Alpine, we get a problem with their udders, their breasts. They get long and pendulous, and then they're difficult to milk, and then the young ones cannot suckle them at birth. So then when you combine the, the two, the Toggenberg and the Alpine, or the Toggenberg and the Sena, you get a better attached udder, you get a hardier animal, and they last longer. When the goats are heavy pregnant, around three months into gestation, we have to separate them. We have to stop milking them for them to build up colostrum for their young. So therefore, we have to separate them and put them in the gestation group while the rest that are milking are still lactating. Telling me earlier that is a, is a new program that you guys are now really starting, the rabbit program. Yes, um, I found that um, you had a lot of problems in the rabbit industry in terms of the rabbits were so small 
and get into market in a long time. So McGill um, University decided that they wanted to help us with one of the projects here. Okay. And I told them I would prefer the rabbit. So they imported for me six does, six females, and three bucks, which is three males, of New Zealand red. Right? And we bought in the New Zealand red as a breed that is not in the island so that they would be so that they would be no family at all to none of the rabbits in Barbados. When they are young, on the mother or just wean, you can group them together, they can do batch growing but as soon as they reach breeding stage you have to do individual pens for the bucks that you're keeping for breeding and the does that you're keeping for breeding also it's very critical that when you're breeding you always should take the door to the buck never the buck to the door the door is very territorial she liked her space and if you put the buck in the door pen she will start to fight with him and most of the time she goes for his testicles and then you have no buck to breathe. What is the goal for the rabbits? To try to get the producers to produce a market rabbit three and a half to four pounds in about 10, 11 weeks, which would make it very profitable to keep rabbits. Rabbits would be running close to chicken. Yes, there's a great demand for rabbits, rabbit meat. Rabbit meat is considered now the healthiest of the white meat and the best. It's low in sodium, it's low in cholesterol, very high protein, the easiest digestible of all the white meats. So the health conscious people and the people who have the communicable diseases are turning to rabbit meat and it's in great, great demand. And we're trying to, the ministry is trying to get the Rabbit People Farmer Association right now and then that we'll be able to get them as a group to market their rabbits to the supermarket. So y'all started selling any of the rabbits yet or no? No, we mm -hmm. have just, been just distributing. Um, we have been distributing bucks to farmers to help improve their stock. Right. But we don't actually sell rabbits here yet. Right, okay. Because it's all about... We're trying to do crossbreeding, crossing the New Zealand red with these other breeds, the Californian, the New Zealand White, the Dutch, and the English Spot, to see what um, the growth rates, how fast they, we get them to market. Right. Also, we're looking at the amount of, of kits they give and the regularity, because we're weaning them now at four weeks instead of eight. Okay, so it's all just any testing purposes, no, to get yes. the rest, best rabbit for Barbados. Get the best rabbit that we can offer the farmers and tell them, well, how it can produce and the amount of litters and the growth rates that they get and how quick it can market. Is it a low maintenance animal or? Very low. Rabbits can be kept in your backyard. You can feed them any kind of green material, breadfruit leaves, potato slips, carrot tops and they will do well. Can you just explain the history of the black belly sheep to me? Well, um, over the years we have done some checking up and research on the originality of the black belly sheep and we found that the black belly sheep evolved here in Barbados during the slave trade in which the slaves when they were coming from Africa they brought down some African hair sheep and when the slave masters were coming down from Europe I think they said England 
they brought down some wool sheep with them. So then these were left to roam on the plantations and they bred and the black belly sheep evolved and we came to that conclusion because this sheep carry characteristics of both breed. A unique animal which who can breed all year round, give multiple birth, they're hardy, they withstand all harsh conditions, their milkability is good, their motherability is good. So what else do we need in an animal? Nothing else. All right, these are four replacement rams. Normally we grow our rams to about a year and a half to see the characteristics of them. These will have come from multiple births and have good growth rates. So we have to grow them out to see how they come out. Look at their pasterns, their testicles, and their back should be straight. The males, we, we, we have a computer program, which give a readout, and then we do a appraisal. And the ones that are averaging over 100, we sell them to farmers for breeding. And the ones with any undesirable characteristics and that um, score very lowly, we send them to the BADMC. They have a lamb program there where they sell fresh lamb and they do hamburgers, sausages, and lamb ham. We would select um, the cream of the cream because we have to make sure that we have the best because we are the number one breeding station in the Caribbean for black belly. We were lucky to have the sheep evolve here and everybody in the Caribbean and all over the world now are interested in having them. So we should make use of that opportunity to bring some revenue into the country. Over time, y'all gave them to other Caribbean islands and stuff like that? Yes, go to government. Mm -hmm. um, we normally, uh, if they have a request, we normally try to, to help them. Um, we sent some to Dominica, St. Vincent, St. Lucia, Guyana, um, all over the Caribbean. Trinidad was the one of the first people that I dealt with that we sent some breeding stock to Trinidad and now they're doing pretty well and they are, are praising our breeds and I think the, the only people that do not uh, appreciate and, and praise this breed is the local Barbadian people. They, they have not gotten to appreciate what they have. There is no denying the significance of agriculture to the island and the importance of the research being conducted at the Greenland Livestock Research Station. It is hoped that more persons will become involved in the sector. If you would like to learn more about the work of the Livestock Station, give them a call at 422-9224 or 422-9020. Miss <laughs> Reed, where you running from?